These are 5 most popular mistakes in Angular that you need to learn and avoid. The most common mistake that I see inside Angular is that people are bringing their JavaScript or React patterns inside Angular world. And actually Angular leverages a lot RxJS and streams, and they help us to write code more scalable and efficient. Let's check on the example. As you can see here, I have a component MC users, and inside we want to store our users and render them. And for this, we first of all need to inject our service, user service, and then here we're getting get users, which is an observable. And here we're subscribing to our observable to get our users and assign them. And after this, inside our HTML, we can simply write ng4 for users and render them. Actually, this code is working, but we have here three different problems. First of all, here we're using subscribe, which means this is the subscription. And when we're writing subscribed, we must unsubscribe also. This is why here inside ng on destroy, we're unsubscribing from our subscription. The second problem is that our code is imperative and not declarative. This means actually that we have just a subscription and inside, like inside callback, we're assigning our users directly to some local property. And the last problem is that we're not using here RxJS, but we simply work with callbacks through subscribe, like we're doing in plain JavaScript. And actually, it can be even worse. People who are coming from plain JavaScript or React can write instead this code, the code with promises, because they don't understand how subscriptions or streams are working. So they're writing something like this, user service dot get users, and they understand, okay, this is stream, I don't understand what is stream, this is why I'm using to promise function. And now I'm getting data just like in plain JavaScript. So I can write here then, get my users, and then inside assign our users to our local property users. And this is even worse because first of all, this is not Angular way. Secondly, we are not using RxJS here at all. We simply convert it to promise and we actually should not do it ever inside Angular. So what is the correct way to write this code? First of all, we should not use subscribe and of course not promises. We want to use directly streams. This is why here I can remove user subscription property completely and instead of users, we will write here users dollar and dollar means that this is a stream. Now here we can write that we want to store here an observable with array of strings inside. The next step will be to assign our property inside constructor. In this case, we are solving two problems. First of all, we won't have undefined, like in the case with users before, because we have a subscribed, which means we have a synchronous data, which means by default we will have undefined in that value. But here we can write directly in constructor this dot users. Here we are assigning just stream from this user service dot get users. In this case, when we are doing it inside constructor, this is the default value of our users, which means it can't be undefined. And secondly, here directly with one liner of RxJS, we are getting inside this users our stream. Also, we can fully remove here ng on init and ng on destroy, we don't need them anymore, and we can remove these implements on the top, because we are not using it at all. Now we just need to update our HTML. Instead of ng4 let user of users, we need to put here a sync pipe. This is why I'm saying here pipe a sync, and this means that our users with dollar is a stream, and Angular will make its own subscription for this stream and destroy it accordingly by itself. So this is how our code is looking like. First of all, it is much smaller. Secondly, we can easily tune this code, because here we have just directly a stream, and if we need some filters or mapping of the data, we can directly write it here in this line. We don't have any subscribes, which means we don't need to unsubscribe, and Angular is doing it for us. This is why I highly recommend you to avoid using subscribe and trying to use only streams. The second important problem is that people are not unsubscribing from the subscriptions. Normally beginners simply write this user service get users dot subscribe, so they don't store subscription and they don't unsubscribe from it. And actually it is not correct, because when our component will be destroyed, our subscription will still hang, because actually Angular doesn't know anything regarding this code. So actually it can happen that you have inside your application a lot of hanging subscribes. 
And we have here several ways how we can fix this problem. First of all, exactly like I showed you previously. If we are not using subscribe at all, but just streams and the sync pipe, you don't need to do anything. Angular will create a subscription and unsubscribe for you when component is destroyed. If you have subscribed, the easiest way is to store this subscription exactly like I am doing here. So we are writing the result of the subscribe, and this is the subscription, inside additional property, this user subscription. And then inside ng on destroy, we can unsubscribe from this subscription. One more common mistake is not using enough TypeScript. Especially if you are coming from JavaScript world, normally you will simply write your TypeScript code like JavaScript, which actually means you are simply creating some properties inside class, but you don't set a type. For example, here we can remove our data types and simply write users and user subscription. It will work, but as you can see here, my editor is showing that we have a data type any, and actually it is not explicit any, it is implicit any, because actually we are not aware that these properties are any, we didn't write it on our own, but it is there by default, because we didn't set any type. And the main problem is here that TypeScript doesn't help you at all. In this case here you don't have any errors if you are doing something not correctly. For example here we can write inside this users just a zero. And we won't get any errors, because as you can see this users is any. If we are writing here data type like array of strings, then it won't be allowed. We are getting an error here, type zero is not assignable to type string array. And this helps us tremendously because we are avoiding a lot of problems. One more popular problem is got modules and got services. What does it mean? It means that you are storing too much stuff inside your module or your service. And actually you normally want to split this stuff between different modules. As you can see here I have a shared module and I have a lot of different stuff, like for example list service, post service, article, top bar and so on, which means actually this is really a big module. And normally we want our module to have just a single purpose, like for example this is article module or maybe a post module. And actually even people with quite a lot of experience have such problems. Normally they are creating something like shared module and they just throw a bunch of stuff there, like for example date service, local storage service and so on, and then at the end they have like a module with 1000 components or 1000 services. This is not a good approach, this is why I highly recommend you to not create shared module, but simply create a module for specific purposes. One more important mistake that people are making is they are not using track by. And if you don't know, inside Angular when we are using ng for loop, we can set a function which will be used to track our elements. And actually by default Angular will render the whole list every single time when we change one element. And this is happening because by default Angular is not aware of our uniqueness and order inside array. This is why normally here we want to write track by and provide inside some function, for example my tracking function. And now we just need to create this function inside our component. So actually here on the bottom I want to create this function. And we are getting as a first argument index and secondly the value. And now inside we must return something unique for our array. In our case we know that this is array of unique strings, this is why here I can simply return a value. And normally if you have an array of objects like array of users, you might use inside object ID. In this case Angular will understand what elements of the array we need to re-render. And actually I want to say that this is bad approach from Angular by default, because we have exactly the same problem inside React, we must provide a unique key inside our array, but there we are directly getting a warning from React when we are not providing a key. But from Angular we are not getting any warning, which means we need to remember and write track by everywhere. And this is my bonus mistake regarding change detection inside Angular. And obviously Angular checks for changes inside our components, but by default it is doing it really aggressively, which means it will re-render even a small change when we are scrolling the page. And normally for production you don't want this, you want your application to be more performant. This is why I highly recommend you to use change strategy on push. This means that our component will be re-rendered only when inputs are changing or when we are manually triggering the re-render. 
And if you want to enable this change detection, you need to go inside your component and here on the top write change detection and here you want to use change detection strategy dot on push. And I highly recommend you to use it in all your components and then just call change detection if you need to. In this case, your application will be much more performant. So these were 5 most popular Angular mistakes. And if you are interested in my 5 tips how to learn Angular faster and better, then don't forget to check this video also.